Ariel Hawani post fight at Invicta FC 13 alongside the brand new Invicta Bantamweight champion, MMA veteran Tanya Evinger, who just picked up her very first pro MMA belt tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been a long journey for you. Okay. Was there ever a point where you thought, you know, I'd have a nice career but never be a champion? And today you prove yourself wrong. No, I always thought I was going to be a champion. It's just uh, getting the opportunity to actually do it. It seems like you kind of almost like turned your career around. Like for a second you were sort of trying to find yourself there. And as of late, I believe this was your seventh win in a row. How did you turn things around? Uh, you know, I just uh, had a lot of crazy stuff going on in my life. I just got away from all that and I got to a good gym. And, you know, I, I stopped taking short notice fights. Well, never mind. I still take short, short yeah. notice fights. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I fight for a different reason now. I fight uh, for the same reason I fought when I started. And I think that makes a difference. What kind of crazy things? I uh, just, I guess, life choices. I don't know. I just had a lot of stuff, negative stuff in my life that I needed to get rid of and get away from. And, you know, changing camps and, and getting them people out of your life, you know, it makes you, makes you a lot more positive person, you know. So I guess that's positive reinforcement. Do you ever think, man, if I figured this out a little sooner, I could have been more popular, richer, champion earlier? Do you think like that? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think my personality fits uh, the cookie cutter they're looking for. I think I'm too, you know, openly spoken and, and loud to, to get wherever them top girls making the money are at. But uh, I'm going to talk my way into a couple paychecks. Who's on your mind? Uh, to fight? Yeah. Uh, I fight anybody. I don't okay. really care. So um, as long as they pay money, I'm down. <laughs> You know, I got to say, I think this is the first time that I speak to you since 2009 when I saw you at an Elite XC show in Stockton, California. Uh, I think you had a couple that night. Yeah. You were very entertaining, though, but you've come a long way, so it's great to see you, you know, actually have gold now and be a champion right. and see you turn things around as well. You're not the same person that you were back in 2009. You've matured. Is it safe to say that? Yeah, I, I think that just losses over my career have kind of opened my eyes and, you know, and, and made me realize what I want to do, so... You know, I, I just learn from everything I can and try to make it the best I can next time. <laughs> I'm tired of losing. <laughs> Last month, Dana White took a picture with uh, Aldana and Alexa Grasso calling them the future and whatnot. It seemed like there was a lot of buzz surrounding Aldana. Did you feel like you were kind of being set up here, that they wanted Aldana to win the belt? Oh, yeah. Everybody they put in front of me, I, I feel like they want to beat me. So, you know, it's uh, it's uh, I get, I get happiness out of beating people and disappointing people. So, um, you know, I, I definitely knew that uh, they were probably going to get signed no matter what, whether I, I beat them or not, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, I definitely wanted to do some damage. That pissed me off a little. And what were you thinking in the first round when you had her in that armbar? It looked like it was done and she just wouldn't tap. Were you thinking, I mean, what do I have to do to f actually finish this person? Yeah, I was trying to break it. It yeah. wouldn't break. I don't know. I've never seen anybody's arm do that. But uh, Did it pop? No. Wow. No, it was weird. I, I, I was like, my hips won't even arch no more. you got to work on the <laughs> hip flexors. But, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But, um, you know, I, I didn't want to lose my position, so I, I kind of just abandoned it. And I, I tried to put it to either side I could, and I couldn't figure it out. So I just went somewhere else. I went to beating her down. Why did you throw up after the third round? Uh, just probably adrenaline. I don't know. I threw up after a couple fights. Oh, that's happened up. before. Yeah, yeah, I threw up quite a bit. <laughs> How do you feel now? Uh, I feel fine now. Now that I calm down, my adrenaline's down and stuff. I feel, I feel good. So you weren't sick. It was just uh, a factor of just the the the, the fight and yeah. yeah, the moment. Yeah, a little bit of the exhaustion. I think, uh, I think I go, I'll go crazy hard every round. And in my first few rounds, were kind of a little tough, getting my wind and everything. And then I always perform better in the later rounds. So I don't know. And just to clear something up, you said this week you have no interest in ever going to the UFC. Is that accurate? Because a lot of people would be surprised to hear that from a fighter of your stature. Uh, I think people have different dreams, and uh, everybody thinks that, that UFC is the you know, highest thing you can go to or whatever. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I felt uh, disrespected a lot by the promotion in general and, and the chances that I wasn't given and everybody around me is given. So, you know, I, it ain't that I would never go. It's just I'm not definitely not interested right now. So, I mean, you know, definitely money talks, but... You know, I made an agreement with Shannon and, and um, sticking around and, and trying to get this belt and, and defending it, and I plan on holding up my agreement. How are you celebrating tonight? I don't know. I'm going to the gay bar. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah, well, no fights and lots of lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy it. Enjoy the belt. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you.